This week on Maker Update, magnetic animatronics, a photo frame with a dark side, a conductive paper dragon, keyblades, a Star Trek desk, and gaming with a pie badge. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, and welcome back to another Adafruit edition of Maker Update. It is good to be back, and the Adafruit crew has clearly been very busy making a lot of new projects for us, so let's start catching up with my pick for the project of the month. Check out this guide from the Ruiz brothers on making 3D printed creatures that seem to move on their own. The trick is in the platform, which uses a Circuit Playground Express and a Cricut expansion board to move a pair of magnets back and forth with a servo motor. By using a magnetic filament in your 3D print, the creature on the platform is invisibly brought to life. For an extra touch, they've wired up UV NeoPixel LEDs in the base which helps give an eerie glow to the translucent elements in the 3D printed creature. It may be a little early to start thinking about Halloween projects, but I'd at least bookmark this one. I mean, can you imagine using this to animate a floating head in a jar or some fighting tarantulas? It's a great trick to know about, and as always, the Ruiz brothers have an exceptionally detailed guide with all the code and resources you need. It's time for some news. Code Academy has teamed up with Adafruit to launch a course for learning to program with CircuitPython. The two-part course is open to beginners and leads up to creating three projects, including a bike light, a plant monitor, and a drum machine. The course is available now to all Code Academy Pro subscribers. Now for more projects, Liz Clark from Blitz City has this guide on making a light reactive photo frame that quickly switches between two photos depending on whether it's dark or light in the room. As a Twin Peaks fan, her particular spin on this project has a photo of Laura Palmer when it's light out, and when it's dark, it switches to a photo of the woodsman and plays an audio sample. Again, I think this is a project to put on your future Halloween project list. It's using an Adafruit Pi Portal board, a power switch, a small speaker, a rechargeable battery pack, and a power boost board for recharging it. Dano Wall has this clever project that allows you to change the colors on a NeoPixel LED ring by spinning a printed color wheel. By mounting the color wheel over the light sensor of the Circuit Playground Express and flashing a series of colors off it from a nearby LED, the board can determine what color isn't reflecting back and signal the color change to the LED ring. It's a cool trick. I don't need it on my camera personally, but I can see this being applied to other projects. Carter Nelson shows how to display local tide levels on a Pi Portal display. It's a relatively simple project that makes use of an existing web service by the NOAA. So there's no API keys or anything to work out. You just need to figure out your local Tide Station ID and plug it in. Aaron St. Blaine has a fun project showing you how to combine paper and LEDs to create a dragon-themed wall sconce. The project is equal parts craft and electronics. One detail I particularly like is how Aaron made a symbol on the front out of copper tape that acts as a capacitive on-off switch. Next, check out the amazing Kingdom Hearts inspired Keyblade props from the Ruiz brothers. There are two versions of this guide. One is for a simplified kit where all the elements screw into each other. The other is for a more advanced and detailed version with lights and sound effects. The simplified kit is nothing more than a series of meticulously made 3D print files. Given the size of the final piece, the design is broken into many pieces that are printed individually and assembled together. With the exception of eight machine screws that are used to sandwich the handle together, everything else is 3D printed with built-in threads that fit together perfectly. Best of all, the design makes it easy to break down and fit into a backpack or a suitcase. The advanced Keyblade prop uses a lot of the same printed thread modular design, but adds LEDs and electronics into the mix along with some extra design details. The heart of the electronics is an Adafruit Feather M4 Express and a Prop Maker Feather Wing. This combo, along with some NeoPixel LEDs, a rechargeable battery, and a speaker, allows you to create light and sound effects that react to your movement. Both designs are a testament to the constantly evolving skills of the Ruiz brothers and worth a look, even if it's just for some inspiration. From the Adafruit community, you have to see this other inspired prop by Dave Harvey. This is a replica of a Star Trek original series quarters desk, complete with a monitor, embedded switches, and sound effects. The switches connect up to an Adafruit sound effects board and audio amplifier board, along with a pair of speakers mounted underneath the desk. As you might expect, Dave rigged up these switches to trigger Star Trek sound effects. I love it. 
Time for a few tips to share. Maker and friend of Adafruit, Sophie Wong, has a new book out called Wearable Tech Projects. A lot of these are projects pulled from her work for Hackspace Magazine. There are 30 projects in here with beautiful pictures, and the book costs around $13 with free shipping worldwide. This week, I learned about eduBlocks.org, which is a free tool designed to make it easier to transition from scratch-style blocks programming over to Python. The idea is that the blocks show more of the code elements so you get a better feel for it. Adafruit has come out with a new version of their Metro M4 Express board called the Metro M4 Express Airlift. This version adds a dedicated ESP32 certified Wi-Fi processor to the board, giving your project a wireless internet connection in a way that takes care of your security needs and also has root certificates preloaded. The light version of this board is available now, but there will eventually be an even beefier version. Phil B has a post detailing how to unlock beast mode for version 1.4.0 of the Adafruit SAMD boards, including Metro M4, Grand Central, Pi Portal, and others. By overclocking, you can get a significant speed boost. One project in particular that's already benefited from this is Lady Ada's Pi Portal gift player, which can now be set up to playback gifts at full speed. For a glimpse into the process that led to the Ruiz Brothers Keyblade designs, they've created two new layer-by-layer -layer videos providing details on Fusion 360 design techniques. The first video demonstrates how to create threads on 3D printed designs so that you can break up large pieces into prints that screw together. The second video goes over the process they went through to create knurling textures on the sword grip. That's a cool one you could add to all kinds of projects, especially anything with a handle. And don't miss this episode of John Park's workshop video and companion guide where he shows off how to make pixel art. It's an especially useful skill to have for our product spotlight. Adafruit just recently unveiled their Pi Badge. It's a $35 board with a 1.8 inch color screen, direction pad, game control buttons, and five NeoPixel LEDs below the screen. As the Pi Badge name implies, it's a great platform for an animated interactive conference badge, and you can easily use the loops on the top to hook into a lanyard. But when I look at this thing, it just screams gaming platform, and the Make Code Arcade compatibility makes it a slam dunk. Check it out, and if they're still out of stock, be sure to sign up to get notified when it's back in. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. When I'm not here on the Adafruit channel, you can catch Maker Update on the DigiKey YouTube channel, or you can just sign up for the Maker Update email newsletter, which goes out every week with each week's show, plus all the show notes and a few bonus projects thrown in. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.